device speaking, my favorite breakthrough device in 2022-23. Obviously, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, it's a difficult choice. It's like you go in the morning uh, to the cafeteria and uh, you really have a lot of options. So it's not easy to choose one among so many inno uh, innovative devices which are uh, pushed into the system almost every, every week. Uh, this is my dis disclosure slide, and on the disclosure, you already understand why I talk about one of these devices. I, to be honest, I don't do it for, uh, for advertisement. I really do it because I believe in this project, and also because I have uh, deep knowledge in, inside of this project. And I'm talking about Tricaspid, and we talk about Cardival. Uh, but tricuspid disease has been for many years uh, uh, left behind, let's say. We always thought that this valve was not so uh, impactful in the prognosis. And since uh, five, six years, I think uh, for many of you who have been uh, with me in Zurich, uh, we were really at the beginning of this, uh, of this effort of entertaining uh, interactions with, this, uh, with the right side of the heart. And in these five to ten years, we learned a lot. We have been learning that there are many different uh, phenotypes of uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, we learned that uh, tricuspid is not usually, is often not three cusps, but is very often more than 50% of patients have more than three uh, leaflets. We have been uh, evolving imaging like hell. I mean, we, we see this valve in different modalities. And also we understood that uh, we need a different uh, quantification modality because this valve usually is working under low pressure conditions, but has a lot of regurgitation. And we still don't know exactly how to manage this different uh, uh, behavior compared to the, uh, the, the mitral valve. In the tricuspid valve, we have been uh, using uh, many devices which, which have been developed initially for the mitral. And obviously the one which is mostly used because widely available, because it's uh, always a, a kind of an off-the-shelf device is the transcatheter edge-to-edge with uh, basically two major devices, uh, mitral clip and, uh, and Pascal. And we know that this is, this is pretty working pretty well in many patients, not in all patients. There is still a significant number of patients who are responding not perfectly to this uh, uh, approach. And uh, more will come. There will be, again, uh, annuloplasty is coming back. You know, I've been yesterday working on cardio band uh, uh, generation two ideas. But obviously, replacement uh, can play a role also in this, in this field. And when we talk about replacement, uh, uh, I will talk about cardioval, but please uh, forgive me uh, if I use only one of these valves. I think I'm fond of many of these valves. There are so many different devices, but I will focus on the one that I know more, the, the best and, uh, and share with you what are the uh, strengths and the limitations of this procedure. Uh, strength. We, uh, we are using now a device which has been uh, adapted for the right side of the heart uh, using a, a, a device which is exactly identical to the mitral. This is not uh, uncommon, to be honest. Uh, the surgical valves we use on the left side, they are the same that we use on the right side, and there is no much uh, difference. Uh, this device has been always designed for uh, transfemoral delivery, the very low uh, protrusion in the alpha tract, although in the right ventricle, as we know, RDOT obstruction is not an issue. But there are many characteristics of this valve which are very useful for the right side. First of all, uh, it doesn't need a lot of radial force to be implanted, and that brings you to two major advantages. Advantage number one, you allow the valve to sit uh, also in large anatomies. And also it allows some degree of reverse remodeling also of the base of the ventricle. Imagine if you block the base of the ventricle with a very strong device which, which needs uh, some radial force, you are going to impact also uh, radial strength. And finally, uh, having a, a little radial force needed is uh, uh, probably protecting from, uh, from pacemaker implantation. We, we have seen other devices have been associated with a large number of implants. Cardioval 
still limited experience, not even 20 patients done till now, but only one patient received the pacemaker afterwards. Uh, valve replacement uh, in most occasions is a very simple uh, concept. Uh, you get into the valve, you, uh, in this particular case, you open some ventricular uh, legs which are engaging the subavular apparatus. And after the subavular apparatus is engaged, just like you do with a mitre clip or with a treat clip or, or Pascal, where you engage two leaflets, here you engage the whole uh, apparatus as much as you can. And finally, you release a atrial cuff. This device uh, comes in different uh, sizes uh, and covers diameters at this moment up to 55 millimeter. Uh, with a very large valve, is a 29 millimeter diameter valve, which is important for uh, for uh, for tricuspid. In this animation, I will uh, show you quickly how this works. It is a device which has a steerable system, which has been adapted for the right side of the heart with some elevation capabilities. Not yet ready for uh, septolateral maneuvers. This is a little bit of a limitation at this moment. It will come in the generation two. Once the device is in the ventricle, the ventricular legs are open and then uh, uh, the uh, device is retracted. It uh, fits into the system and then releases this uh, atrial uh, flange, the atrial flange, this uh, atrial cuff, sorry. Uh, the atrial cuff is uh, doing two things. One is uh, improving sealing and two is sandwiching the leaflets between the uh, between the um, ventricular legs and uh, the atrial cuff. After this is done, the valve is uh, already functioning and the valve is uh, usually having a, a good CD. I have a small uh, presentation of the first man just to show you a representative case. This was done uh, one year ago. Uh, April 7th was a female patient. Almost every patient is female at this moment with a severe TR and moderate MR. Uh, you see now the initial phase. Uh, now we have some little differences. We are not placing the wire anymore in the pulmonary. We use a safari uh, already in the right ventricle. Uh, but basically the concept is the same. We advance the device into the right, into the right atrium. And once you are in the right atrium, uh, we, uh, we work usually without the wire in most occasions. So uh, that we um, maneuver this device just exactly similar to a mitre clip. The legs are open in the uh, atrial side. Once we are coaxial, we advance the device into the ventricle. Just below the leaflets, don't, we don't go too deep. We stay anterior to the anterior papillary muscle. We pull back. And as we pull back, uh, we engage uh, as many uh, portions of the valve as possible. So we try to, to reach all three or more components of the valve leaflets. And uh, <clears throat> after that, uh, the atrial flange is released. You can see now. So uh, the cuff is uh, put back, is a self expanding uh, structure. Uh, the atrial flange is released and the valve is already. Uh, uh, ready to function. The, the distal portion is released as well, and in a few seconds, uh, cardiac output is, uh, is uh, reestablished. The patient remains pretty stable during all the phases of this procedure. Uh, the tricuspid valve works obviously perfectly. There are very uh, limited PV leaks in few patients, sometimes more, in most occasions coming from the anteroceptal commissure where the valve remains a little bit far away which is also good to avoid any, any uh, uh, AV block because there is no much interaction with the conduction tissue. You can see a tiny leak here in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, anteroceptal commissure. Not all patients have this. Uh, results are pretty good. We had uh, only, uh, unfortunately, the first man was, uh, um, this, what I showed you was not the first, but was, was the second, sorry. Anyhow, the first man, Unfortunately, did not survive uh, after the procedure because of, uh, of uh, after all this match with the functioning valve, but all the other patients have been uh, uh, surviving this procedure. Uh, the first case was done in an emergency situation, so it underlines the issue of uh, patient selection. And you can see here 
in the very initial phase, uh, different operators may have different uh, time uh, of procedural times, but the learning curve goes down very quickly. Already the second procedure is done usually very fast. Most of the time is spent on understanding imaging and specifically to uh, quantify to quantify lifted insertion in a multi uh, planar reconstruction. I will uh, skip the take home messages of the cardiovascular because now I talk about uh, uh, a bit more broadly and also I tell you why I, I was picking this device. Besides the beauty of the, of the device, which is a beautiful device, I decided to show you a tricuspid replacement because uh, tricuspid replacement together, I would say with repair, is the uh, gate opener uh, for uh, innovation in the next uh, five to 10 years. We are going to uh, study the right side of the heart and learn a lot of things. Uh, this is, for instance, uh, the amount of uh, right ventricular remodeling that you obtain only after three months after you implant these kind of valves. But there are many other topics to be to investigate. As I told you, the first case uh, died of uh, somehow after open match. Uh, it's a problem that we need to understand uh, further uh, to understand the limitations of uh, replacement, as you can imagine. Uh, after all, mismatching the right side uh, is a bit different from what we see on the left side. And also, it will not probably happen in patients with undergoing uh, uh, transcathe edge to edge, why it could be a problem for patients undergoing replacement. We are learning a lot about the venous system is much more difficult than uh, we thought. Uh, if we want, we can elaborate afterwards. But if the overall physiology, pathophysiology of uh, chronic uh, TR, uh, is still uh, something to be completely written, uh, including uh, understanding the predictors of right ventricular function, what to do after the procedure in terms of anticoagulation, how to optimize these patients prior to the uh, procedures, and how to select uh, patients for different uh, techniques. See, uh, there is a lot of limitations and gray zones for, uh, for uh, replacement, uh, uh, and these gray zones... Uh, uh, and limitations are today also one of the reasons why I'm very uh, involved and very interested in uh, participating to these early, early feasibility trials because we learn a lot. Uh, as I told you, the after all mismatched futility is one of the issues. And again, uh, the important point is that there is no one single patient would look the same to the other one. We learn there are many different subcategories a uh, lot of different uh, uh, phenotypes, uh, and each phenotype probably is associated with different behaviors, different uh, prognosis, and uh, maybe in the future we'll need different techniques. Uh, the issue of the road mismatch is uh, becoming increasingly important. Uh, there are many ways to predict RV function after these procedures. The probably the one the one which is most promising is the uh, RVPA coupling, which is uh, basically uh, trying to give a measure of the RV function uh, relative to uh, the pressure, the, the 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 after load conditions. But again, the other issue is that we still we still see many patients who are referred too late, and uh, in these patients uh, we are in front of heart failure patients with chronic. Uh, uh, look at the output. Again, these are patients we were not seeing before. We were not even watching to these patients before. If they were coming to our hospital, that we were just saying, you are too late. Today, we have options, but we need to really uh, in, uh, learn a lot from uh, some, uh, also from some exams, which were not done in the past so often. And now we need to reestablish our, our uh, skills and knowledge around uh, things like uh, right heart catheterization. The issue is also another question, do, do we really need to, to clear completely TR to improve uh, the outcomes? You may say yes, but in, 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 in basically, if you look at the TR imp, uh, improvement, which is obviously very good with the replacement and, and uh, only 60% of patients have a real reduction of TR after uh, clipping or cardio band, well, the point is that if you look at the NYHA class improvement, there is no difference between replacement and repair. 
as well as there is no much difference in terms of improvement in, uh, in, uh, in functional classes and, and, and functional capacity. So the question whether we should really abolish uh, in all patients remains. There is the question of anticoagulation, which is still a problem. Also, when we think about long-term outcomes, with, there is an issue of AV conductance in some of these devices. For instance, in the experience with Evoke, uh, uh, there has been uh, a pretty high rate of permanent mega 10%. And then there is a lot of anatomical limitations that will not be, I don't want to be tedious, but you know, the size of the annulus, the position of papillary muscles, uh, the angle between the tricuspid valve and the IVC, there are, all these issues are very important. That brings me to the final point that, uh, as usual, uh, there is a strong need to uh, master all alternatives, uh, including obviously replacement, where we will uh, probably balance the uh, advantages of a complete correction of TR with a disadvantage of using a prosthesis and probably having something which is potentially a little bit higher risk than just repair. With this, I would say I would end my uh, my choice uh, the discussion saying the future is full of surprises and exciting discoveries and thanks to this new innovation we're going to learn a lot also about uh, uh, the, the pathology that we are at the moment treating without knowing all the details of the natural history. Thank you very much guys for your attention.